What up, Buffalo Fanatics? Z-Bot here with you for day two of the 2023 Buffalo Bills Paper Plate Award Ceremony. Last night, we handed out the most improved paper plate award to Bills right tackle Spencer Brown. If you missed that episode, make sure to go check it out. For this edition, we're changing things up a little bit. Tonight's paper plate award embodies sheer will. The ability to be backed into the smallest corner imaginable, defy all odds, and somehow come out triumphant. I want you to imagine yourself at your day job, doing your day-to-day tasks, life as usual. The company you work for has the highest of expectations, but is coming up drastically short of the mark. So much so, in fact, that the person in front of you in the corporate hierarchy is about to get the boot. And their replacement? Yep. You guessed it, baby. You. No big deal, really. It's just like any other typical day at the office, except now you're in charge of saving a sinking ship. Succeed and you could be rewarded greatly, not only with company success, but with individual promotion. Fail, however, and that ship that was nearly submerged when you took over the reins will be sitting at the bottom of the ocean and you'll be to blame. One man in the Bills organization was faced with this exact task. And not only did he save the company, or the ship, but he wound up turning a profit. He he was able to dock the boat. Tonight's paper plate award is the Next Man Up Award. Before we dive deep into our winner, I want to give a quick shout out to my friends over at BetUS, who are the sponsor of today's video. I use BetUS all the time for all of my sports wagering, including most recently, the Super Bowl. And speaking of Super Bowl, you can go and bet on next year's Super Bowl right now on BetUS. And you can do so by taking advantage of their awesome new promotion in the link in the description below. BetUS will give you a 125% sign up bonus, not only on your first deposit, but on your first three deposits. So you go to the link below, you click it, and you sign up using the promo code JOIN125. Then you can place your bets on the Bills to win the Super Bowl like I did, and you can also get a 10% gambler's insurance if you're active for at least six months. So if you couldn't read between the lines of my riveting analogies, tonight's recipient of the Next Man Up Paper Plate Award is none other than Bills offensive coordinator Joe Brady. In order to really understand what Joe Brady was tasked with this past season with the Buffalo Bills, we have to go all the way back to when the season started. The Bills came into the year like they have the last several years as a perennial Super Bowl favorite and with the expectations that they could get there. Those expectations took a bit of a hit, however, when in week one, the Bills played about as poorly as you could have possibly imagined and wound up losing to a Zach Wilson-led Jets on Monday Night Football. But as quickly as those expectations were lowered, they were revved back up to new heights after the Bills rattled off back to back to back dominant performances, including the dismantling of a Miami Dolphins team that was fresh off a 70-20 victory over the Denver Broncos. Heading into week five, the woes of week one felt like they were light years in the past. But in typical Bills fashion, it wouldn't be until our expectations got to their peak that things would start crumbling down again. The Bills would go on to lose four of their next six games, looking like a shell of themselves offensively in nearly every outing. It was clear that some change, whatever that might be, was needed. And change did end up coming the Tuesday morning after the Bills lost to the Denver Broncos on Monday Night Football because of a too many men on the field penalty. And that change was a change at offensive coordinator. After just a year and a half as the OC for the Buffalo Bills, Ken Dorsey was out and quarterbacks coach Joe Brady was promoted. And all that was being asked of him in this new role by the Bills organization, by the team, by hundreds of thousands of rabid fans was to save the season, which, you know, easy enough. Brady came out of the gates hot in his first game as the OC, helping lead the Bills offense to over 30 points, something they had not done since week four, and they destroyed the Jets 32 to 6. Almost instantly, you could tell that there was new life fueled within this Buffalo Bills team. It wasn't just the win itself that helped reinstill whatever hope was left, because at this point, things were bleak to say the least. But it was the way that they did it. 
The team looked as energized as ever, and the overall aura of the offense just looked and felt different, especially with Josh Allen. I remember Josh Allen cracked a smile during that game, and it felt like it was the first time we had seen him genuinely happy in months. It was no secret that Joe Brady had a ton to do with that. When Joe Brady was asked what he wanted out of Josh Allen in this game, he simply said, I just wanted Josh to be Josh. And although that seems like a no-brainer strategy, Josh was not Josh during the latter stages of Ken Dorsey's tenure with the Bills. This win over the Jets was huge. It was much needed, but it was the tip of an Everest-sized iceberg. The Bills would have to go to the reigning NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles the following week, a team at that point that was 9-1. Despite showing signs that the week prior was no fluke, the Bills would end up losing this game despite scoring 34 points and despite having the lead in overtime. With the Bills now sitting at 6-6 before the bye week, the hopes of making the playoffs were seemingly all but gone. As you fought the ever-increasing reality that these Bills were not going to make the postseason, you couldn't help but realize that despite losing to the Eagles, this Bills offense had looked better the last two weeks than it had in the last two months. We all knew the Bills had the capabilities of being one of the best offenses in the league. No one ever thought they were truly bad enough to be putting on display what they were putting out on display through the entire month of October and into early November. For whatever reason, the Bills seemed to shy away from their strengths and shy away from the simple things under Ken Dorsey. But within just two weeks of football, it felt like Joe Brady realized this and was taking strides in order to correct it. After the Eagles lost, McDermott would say that Allen's level of play had risen over the last two weeks, and the inconsistency leading up to the last three weeks was one of the reasons why he made the decision that he did to move forward at OC. Before heading into the Week 13 bye, Joe Brady said, we have to understand that we just have to fine-tune some things and clean some things up. Like I said, Joe Brady knew what this offense was capable of. They just weren't getting there. He didn't have to reinvent the wheel. He didn't have to throw out the playbook. He had to fine-tune things in order to get this Bills offense back to what we had come accustomed to seeing from them. But he would have to do it quickly because what awaited the Bills after the bye was essentially a month and a half of playoff football. They couldn't afford a single slip-up. They were staring a 14% chance to make the playoffs dead in the face. And at this point, that's all anybody cared about. That's all anybody was clinging on to. Nobody had given a single thought to the idea of winning an AFC East title or getting a top two seed because at that point, it felt like it was damn near impossible. And frankly, that's because it was. Going into week 14, the Bills had a 0.1% chance of obtaining a top two seed in the playoffs. If that's not next to impossible, I don't know what is. In my opinion, what would occur after this bye week would be nothing short of miraculous. It may not have been the prettiest. It may not have been the dominant Bills we've seen throughout the last couple of years. But the results were all W's, and that is all that mattered. Joe Brady would help lead these Buffalo Bills to six consecutive victories, all in playoff-type atmospheres. They'd beat what would be the Super Bowl champion Chiefs on the road in Arrowhead. They'd beat a Dallas Cowboys team 31-10, who at the time looked like they could have been one of the league's best. They beat a Miami Dolphins team on the road in a game that had the once unobtainable AFC East title hanging in the balance. Believe me, I know that any season that does not end in a Super Bowl championship feels like a failure, especially to us Bills fans who have never experienced one. But when you sit back and think about what this season could have been, I mean, this season could have been a failure of epic proportions. This Bills team would not only end up winning the AFC East, getting a top two seed, and of course making the playoffs, but they would go blow for blow with the Kansas City Chiefs in the divisional round, and in my opinion, gave them their best crack out of all four teams that the Chiefs faced in their Super Bowl run. At the end of the day, is the Bills season still a failure because they didn't raise a trophy? Absolutely. But to me, there is a major difference between your failure coming in the divisional round where you had a chance to beat the would-be Super Bowl champions on the final drive or your failure coming in early December where you don't even sniff the playoffs and your season ends before week 16. 
I think it's safe to say that without Joe Brady, the Bills season would have ended in the first week of December as opposed to the third week of January. I know it's tough to look back on this season in a positive light because it just ended and we just had to watch the Chiefs win yet another Super Bowl. But imagine just how much worse it would have felt if you had that same reality today and the Bills didn't even get a crack at the Chiefs in the playoffs. Joe Brady essentially saved this season. I do not think the Bills would have rattled off six straight. I do not think the Bills would have won the AFC East. I do not think the Bills would have had a home playoff game, much less a playoff game, if Joe Brady did not take over for Ken Dorsey and implement the little things that I think helped save this Buffalo Bills season. What Joe Brady came in and did wasn't drastic. It wasn't like he completely flipped the script and this Bills team was a new team overnight. But he didn't have to do that. What he had to do is exactly what he said he had to do. Come in, fine-tune some things, clean things up, and the rest will follow. The biggest key to success that I think Joe Brady brought to the table was allowing Josh Allen to play Josh Allen-type football. In weeks 1 through 10 under Ken Dorsey, Josh Allen ran the ball only 48 times. But in the nine games under Joe Brady, Josh Allen ran the ball 83 times. And we all know Josh Allen is a much more imposing quarterback when he's able to instill his dominance on you through his running ability. And not only was he instilling the run game through Josh Allen, he was instilling the run game collectively. And I think it brought a balance to this Bills offense that we really haven't seen since Josh Allen has taken over at quarterback. According to ESPN, after Brady took over play calling in week 11, the Bills had the second highest designed rush percentage in the NFL at 46.5% compared to 26th from weeks 1 through 10 under Ken Dorsey at 35.5%. It may not have been this high-flying offense that we have become accustomed to seeing from these Bills and that we've seen result in wins, but it was a style of offense that was necessary in the moment, and it was a style of offense that inevitably ended up getting these Bills six consecutive wins and all the way to the divisional round. I think we finally realized under Joe Brady that these Buffalo Bills can win games without having to be 100% solely reliant on Josh Allen's ability to be Superman for 60 straight minutes. James Cook got heavily involved under Joe Brady, helping get him to a thousand yard year, and he also became heavily involved in the pass game as well. It just felt like we saw a more open Buffalo Bills offense under Joe Brady and a style of offense that I think a lot of us thought the Bills just weren't capable of, and that's relying on the run, taking the easy passes, dominating time of possession. The Bills played a style of offense that is conducive to winning football games, and that's exactly what Joe Brady did. 7-2, and two, including the playoffs. Of course, that six-game win streak and the end of the season that left you with something to root for as opposed to sitting on your couch watching all the other fan bases enjoy the playoffs. Was Joe Brady the sole reason for the Bills' success after the bye week? Of course not. But I don't think you can look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself the Bills would have had the success that they had without him. If they didn't get the spark from moving on from Ken Dorsey and putting Joe Brady in at OC, I don't think the Bills get as far as they did in 2023. And I think it's obvious that Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean feel the same. This was as tough of a interview as you could possibly have for a job. Joe Brady was thrown to the wolves, season on the line, week in and week out, and one slip up and it immediately cost you the entire year. In a role that Joe Brady had to take over overnight, he goes seven and two. He propels this Bills team to a two seed, gets him into the playoffs, and inevitably this is what earned him the right to be the full-time offensive coordinator for these Bills going into 2024. I couldn't be more stoked to see what the future holds for Joe Brady because if he was able to accomplish all that he did in such a short amount of time with that much pressure on him week in and week out, it's up to your imagination as to what he is going to be able to accomplish with a full offseason in front of him with the full capabilities of instilling whatever he sees fit into this offense. You never know when your opportunity is going to arrive. And when Joe Brady's came, he was up for a Herculean challenge, and he overcame it with flying colors. There's no doubt about it that if there was an imaginary paper plate award out there that truly resembled the next man up mentality, Joe Brady takes the plate.
All right, folks, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you missed last night's Paper Plate Award, make sure to check that one out as well. On your way out the door, make sure to hit that like button and also make sure to hit subscribe and the bell icon so that you get notified for the remaining Paper Plate Awards I have coming your way throughout the rest of the week as well as all the BF content we have coming your way on a daily basis. Also, do me a favor and make sure to check out my friends over at BetUS in the link in the description below. You click that link, you use the promo code JOIN125, and you get a 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits with BetUS. You can head over there. Place your bets on the Bills to win the Super Bowl in 2024 because with Joe Brady at the helm, it might not just be a paper plate award he's holding up at the end of next season. All right, guys, until the next one, much love. Thanks again for tuning in, and as always, go Bills.